your thoughts. <laughs> what? What? Who? Welcome at 902 on this uh well Wednesday morning. It's been a Wednesday. It's been a month, man. This month of March for all of us here at Riverbender just kind of, you know, flew by in a way. And so we're just kind of ready for Good Friday. I know here at Riverbender ready for Easter and I know that so many of you guys are too. And we got a great show until we get to that point though. If you had a anything on your mind today, reach out to the text line 618-465 Six one eight seven five nine seven four six nine. You can already tell I started my work day at Riverbender today, giving off the office phone number. We're going to talk to Centerstone today in just about oh, 16 minutes or so, but who's counting? And then following Centerstone's conversation, we're going to be talking to Mark McCurdy's. He has a presentation coming over at Post Commons here on April the 2nd. We're going to get the details on all of it in ways that <clears throat> we can be a part of his lecture. And then at 10.35, we're talking to Kristen Burns. A lot of great stuff happening in Wood River, and we're going to get the latest and, you know, all the things coming down the pipeline and ways we can get involved. That comes down the pipeline in the next two hours. But at 9.04, here's what's happening around the River Bend. Make sure you sign up for that daily email update where you'll never miss out. You can join myself and over 70,000 people each and every day of the work week and on Saturdays with Around the River Bend. We'll take you to Madison County and Alton first. Madison County officials did announce on Tuesday, March the 26th, that after receiving a new letter from the Salvation Army, it will be indefinitely deferring its application of the $2.5 million grant for a proposed 48-bed homeless shelter in Alton while a new location is sought. The nonprofit organization sent a letter requesting that Madison County Grants Committee defer any action on the $2.5 million home investment partnership, the American Rescue Plan grant, so it could find an alternative location for this project. The Grants Committee, which is set to hold its next meeting on at 4 p.m. on the 2nd of April, will not take any action on the grant. I have been working with Travis Widman who is an advisory board member to the Salvation Army, and I'm glad that they are now going to find a new location for the shelter, said County Board Member Valerie Ducleff of Godfrey. The proposed location, which is directly adjacent to schools, homes, and business, is and in one of the county's premier historic downtowns, is not an appropriate location for such a massive new Homeless shelter, that was the quote from Miss Ducliffe. Ducliffe first found out about the plan to build the shelter on March the 11th. The plan was pulled before it went to the county board for a vote on March the 20th. Ducliffe, who grew up in the historic Middletown neighborhood where the Salvation Army Booth House was located until it was torn down in 2021, is no longer the spot for a homeless shelter. Ducliffe's county board district encompasses north and western parts of the city. Ducliffe said since learning about the new $7.1 million facility, she's spoken to more than 100 residents who live in the neighborhood, and a majority of them do not want to see the shelter rebuilt at the same location, especially one far larger than the previous shelter. Ducliffe said county officials discussed a need for a shelter last year following a community development needs assessment. She said if a proposed shelter comes before the committee again, she would like to be kept informed. 
Captain Cassie Gray with the Salvation Army stated in the letter, they are working diligently with the community to find a new location for its planned new Hope House. Once the desired location is found, we will submit our amended proposal for the consideration of the Grants Committee. That was a statement from Captain Gray. Also in the news today, out of Edwardsville, during their regular meeting on Monday, March the 25th, Edwardsville Community Unit School District No. 7 Board of Education approved plans for the Edwardsville High School Commons expansion and restroom renovation. Here's what we know. The renovation will add 8,000 square feet to the existing EHS Commons. This new area will include a grab-and-go Tiger Bites area in which students can purchase snack options, space for studying and events, along with the renovated restrooms. The board voted to approve expansion contract awards for bid packages. Bob Patty and Scott Ahart voted no. The restrooms have been a center of debate for many parents and community members. The all-gendered restrooms will include single-user stalls with sinks and an open corridor. There will be two other traditionally gendered bathrooms in the school. There were several speakers during the March 25th board meeting, and a little over half spoke in opposition to the restrooms. I don't have a problem with the design, to be honest, Bob Patty said before the vote. My bigger concern gets to the heart of, again, back to the court of public opinion. Have we done our due diligence and made sure that we have solicited everybody? Because it is a change. It's a significant change. And have we done our due diligence to make sure that we have gotten everyone's input? I don't want my vote to be construed as being political on one side or another. I still come back to why I'm voting no for this, because I do feel strongly about the process has been handled, because I think the process at the end of the day, regardless of how many people were upset about it, people need to walk away and feel like we were open and honest from the beginning. Patty also raised concerns on how the bid process was handled. The Board of Education voted unanimously to deny a bid for Holland General Contractors. <clears throat> Bill, uh, President Jill Bartles then made a motion to approve the rest of the expansion contract awards. Patty and Ahart voted no. Everyone else voted yes. This means the proposed project will move forward as planned. As of right now, the project will be completed by August of 2025 for a total of $6.8 million, and we'll keep you updated as more details do emerge. Piston Aviation Flight School is opening a second flight school at the St. Louis Regional Airport. The company will celebrate its new location with a grand opening on Saturday, March the 30th, this Saturday, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. at the St. Louis Regional Airport, where attendees can check out the planes, enjoy a catered meal, take a discovery flight, and learn more about Piston Aviation Flight School. Piston Aviation offers training for private pilots and sports pilots, Megan Ord, the owner of Piston Aviation, noted that the flight school has nine planes and multiple certified flight instructors at their current location in Creve Coeur. They will be expanding to the St. Louis Regional Airport so they can grow their services and connect with more people. Ord said that flying is a positive experience and... They try to make it fun at flight school. As part of the grand opening celebration, Piston Aviation will also offer $3,000 off their private pilot license program if you, sh uh, if you sign up before April the 1st. During the grand opening, attendees and people who are interested in enrolling in the flight school are encouraged to take a discovery flight. Ord says it's a good idea to make sure you can stomach flying before you commit to flight school. Now, while flying for your pilot's license is a lot of hard work, Ord did note that it can be a great as both a career path and even a hobby. When you're sure you enjoy flying and you want to know more about becoming a pilot, Ord is happy to answer any questions and tell you more about their wonderful program. For more information about Piston Aviation Flight School, you can check out their website, flypiston.com that's flypiston.com or head on over to the official facebook page where you can see all of the details on the opening on march the 30th also in the news today out of alton excuse me out of godfrey on monday march the 25th freer auto body welcomed congresswoman budzinski and godfrey mayor mccormick as the business received a 125 thousand dollar 
Rural Energy for American Program Grant, the REAP, otherwise known as REAP, a program through the U.S. Department of Agriculture, offers grants to small businesses to make energy efficiency improvements. Freer Auto Body owner Tim Freer explained that their power bill recently increased almost $4,000. In response, the business installed solar panels on their roof. He said the grant will provide, quote, long-term relief, end quote, for the business's energy costs. There's 219 panels. That's a 91-kilowatt system. It's supposed to produce 115% of what our needs actually are. Budzinski has announced that 10 small businesses in Madison and Macoupin counties will receive over $1.8 million in REAP funding. The goal is to minimize energy costs while promoting energy efficiency in rural communities. Mayor McCormick added that Freer Auto Body gives back to the community and has been a strong business in Godfrey over 30 years. They made a nice living here, but they give back, and that's very important. It's an American family-owned business, and that's been great in many, many ways to the village of Godfrey. You can visit FreerAutoBody.com to learn more about Freer Auto Body. One final bit of news for you today before we take a look at weather. From Dan Brandon out of Glen Carbon, the village of Glen Carbon did announce that after the recent hailstorms, many residents have been solicited by various companies, including roofing businesses. The village stressed that residents need to be aware that door to door solicitors must have a permit to be in any neighborhood and urge those in the village to show extreme caution with any of these visitors. You can call the non-emergency police line at 618-288-7226 if you have any concerns or questions. The Glen Carbon Police Department issues all permits for door-to-door soliciting. These permits are issued per solicitor and must be carried at all times. Permits are good for three months. Once permitted, solicitors are allowed the following. Solicit at any uh, any location unless posted no soliciting. Solicit between the hours of dawn to dusk and solicit Monday through Saturday, no Sundays and no holidays. Also in, well, in the news, let's take a look at weather out there. Right now, currently as it sits, feels like it's cold. It feels like 36 degrees, but the real temp on your screen is 33 today. Some Clouds, but mostly sunny. Tonight, just clear and cold. Temperatures will only reach 52 degrees today. They will drop down to 30 degrees overnight, but on Thursday, it's our glimmer of hope. 65 degrees for the high on a Thursday morning. No clouds in the sky. And temperatures drop down to 40 degrees on Thursday night as we head into Friday to start our Easter weekend. On Friday, a high of 72 degrees. Oh, yes, a low of 54. On Saturday, partly Cloudy skies, a 25% chance of rain, 72 degrees for the high again, and then 49 for the low as we head into Easter Sunday. On Easter, a 30% chance of thunderstorms, a high of 68, and a low of 59. Before we uh, take a quick break, let's always take a look at downtown Alton. It's always good to see our skyline out there. Look how beautiful that looks today. Some cars coming in and out, but really just looks like a slow moving Thursday morning or Wednesday morning in the heart of the 618. You know, before I take a quick break, I did want to <clears throat> fill you in on RP Lumber. You know, they do such great work for the community and really are always there to be an advocate and help out so many projects. But let's talk about projects. I'm sure, just like me, hey, I moved into my house year one, almost completed, but I'm already ready to start doing some outside work. Um, Ethan Holmes from Holmes Outdoor Service has been out there and getting some uh, help me with my walkway and all that good stuff to make it look a little bit more presentable. But now here's the big er projects, not the big guest, but the big er projects are going to be when we start adding on my wrap around porch. And you know that I got to start asking around at RP Lumber. They are our local decking material experts. And that's what I think so fascinating. I mean, Hell, the way decking and fencing's gone, it's a whole new world of opportunity with all this great material, whether it's composite, dex trekking, you name it, there's so many to go through. 
It's great to know that we have RP Lumber, where we get the best service, the best value at so many um, locations throughout the 618. So whether or not you're starting on that project now or you're going to start in the next couple of months, get a jump on it. Start getting a look at some prices, maybe even get some material purchased. You're going to find the best value at RP Lumber, your local decking material experts. And for more information, all you have to do is go to rplumber.com. That's rplumber.com, where you you can see the latest of their decking materials, their railing system, the deck lighting, all of that important stuff. RP Lumber is your one-stop destination for high-quality decking materials and value-added services such as free takeoff service, free deck design, and your and convenient job site delivery. For more information, rplumber.com. That's rplumber.com. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back with our conversation with Centerstone right after this on Riverbender.com. <laughs> Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. I just got a new air conditioner. Top of the line. I bet mine's better. It's so efficient and quiet. I hardly know it's running. I've got you both trunked. I've got a Linux. So do I. Barrett Heating and Cooling carries Linux products to meet any budget. Don't gamble with your energy dollars. Call Barrett Heating and Cooling and start saving today. Linux. Innovation never felt so good. Timber! With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alt Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. DJ Mikey. This is where I am today. Let me show you where I started. Life's better when you're under our roof. That's because our expert agents will make you feel totally protected with the right auto and home coverage at the right price. Also, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. American Family Insurance. Since 1993, Sparks Junk Removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients. That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Not sure if you've noticed, but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. At Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go.
When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. Welcome back to our daily show. Here's CJ. We walk the line and try to see behind. Falling behind. What could be? Oh, oh, oh. Bring me a higher love. Bring me a higher love. Ah, 921. Welcome back to this Wednesday morning. We are halfway through the week, and for so many of you, you're almost there. Tomorrow's your Friday. It won't be for me, but I'll see you live at night on Friday, too. You know, uh, as we've been having our conversations with Centerstone, we've had so many great insights, so much great feedback from all of you that are gathering this information because it's so important to know it before you need to know it. And I want to make sure that we can inform everybody. And Carson Finney is going to join us now on Zoom. This is the first time we've tried this new Zoom. Uh, let's, uh, Let's try it out here. Carson, how are we today? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. And Carson, you're a coordinator at the Crisis Stabilization Unit, correct? Yeah. And take me through your time at Centerstone. How long have you been there? So I've been here about five years off and on. This go, it's been about two years, and I've been in this position for a year. And take me and detail me that uh, two year, or this last year being in this position, what have you been able to kind of gather and your thoughts on the CSU uh, living, uh, living the experience? Yeah, so we've been able to reopen, um, which has been really, really great. We made some updates to the building and to our programming as well. Um, And we've been able to take folks for, you know, up to 10 days and really help them get the support that they need after any kind of mental health crisis. And when you say any mental health crisis, do you guys really um, take individuals no matter what's going on, what the situation, if they need that help, this is a great spot for them to kind of recharge those batteries and refresh a little bit? Yeah, typically. So Mm -hmm. there are some folks who need a higher level of care, so they need to go to the hospital and get things sorted out first, um, but then they can come here after that. But generally, as long as you don't need a hospital and you need some extra support, we are here and crisis looks so different for everybody. Like you and I probably would have very different, different definitions of, you know, what would be a major event in our lives. And so it can be, you know, straight mental health stuff. It can be a loss of housing, relationship issues, anything that's a kind of a major stressor. We're here to kind of help support people through that. And while someone's in the CSU or in in the uh, the unit, what are they going to be able to learn? What are some of the tools that they'll be able to maybe take with them uh, down the road? Yeah, so we do a lot of groups. We have six a day. There's more downtime than you would think. I know it sounds like a lot, <laughs> but we focus on coping skills and realistic coping skills. You know, I know a lot of times in mental health, People think like, oh, it's just a guided meditation. I'm never going to do that. And neither do I. But we're here to focus on things that you will actually do when you need it. So even just distractions, anything you can do. We do a lot of safety planning. And so, you know, if we do get to a point where what usually works isn't working anymore, who can you call? Like, what can we do to kind of get you what you need at that point? Um, We have a psychiatrist that does telepsychiatry with clients. That's a major barrier, especially in this area. People don't usually get into the psychiatrist quickly. And so people can see our psychiatrist while they're here, you know, get their meds figured out if they want to. We are totally voluntary. So everything is optional. Um, But yes, we really just focus on getting, getting the supports and needed like coping skills in place. And then you can go back to life and take it with you. Well, and that's so important, just going back to something that you just had said about that psych- uh, that psychiatrist that you're able to talk with. And and so many times I've had folks on talking about mental health and pediatrics to, you know, all the way down to the gauntlet of ages. And it seems like that's always a concern is it just takes sometimes a little bit too long for that individual if they're having a little bit of a a crisis or, or a little bit of a um, a situation occur that they can't talk to anybody. So to have that here at the CSU is really a big incentive for so many people that just need that conversation, need those couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes, you know, just being out of meds 
is a crisis on its own for yeah. some people and not everybody has access to you know a primary doctor who can refill in the meantime or or even somebody to call and so we're here to try to fill all those gaps and take me through some of the folks that, that come through the doors of the the crisis stabilization unit do I, I just imagine that you guys serve all ages that there's not really a one demographic situation when it comes to csu is that the case yeah, we have quite the mix of people that come through. We are only 18 and over. Okay. You do have to be an adult. You have to be your own guardian, but otherwise there aren't really any other criteria with that. We've had folks who, you know, are having you know any kind of postpartum even to, you know, people who have not been able to refill their meds, who have more, more serious chronic mental health stuff. And then everybody in between, we've had kids from SIU who are just really, you know, struggling with the stress, being away from home. So it's really, it's really a wide mix. And a lot of times our clients here can make connections with each other and learn from each other as well. Well, and and honestly, to me, that's what I think is such a, a great in, incentive and why I love this idea of the CSU is because, you know, and, and Carson, you know so much more about this than I do, but just from my personal <laughs> experience, you know, and some of the things that I've gone through is you know, there's always that moment where you personally feel like, hey, I need a couple of days. You know, I just need to figure this out. I'm going a thousand miles an hour. I can't even know which way's up, what's down. But to have this option to where you can really pull back a little bit here and get refocused enough to where we can still tackle the days today of our life. I think this is just such an important program to have for so many people. Yeah, we do too. I think that, you know, mental health does focus on well, they try to focus on everybody's needs, but when it comes down to it, we really look at, you know, the highest area of need, those folks that need hospitalization and kind of the lowest area need people who can get their needs met just in outpatient, you know, once a week. And so we're here, there are a lot of folks who, you know, end up in the ER or in some kind of crisis and don't go to the hospital and then they just go home. It was bad enough. They thought they needed to go to the ER and then they get sent home and they're like follow up in a week. Um, and so we're kind of here to to meet them where they're at more than we have traditionally before. And Carson, if you don't mind me asking um, as well, we've been having conversations about um, Centerstone's amazing substance uh, ab abuse treatment programs with recoverwiththus.org. Over at CSU, do you guys experience a lot of uh, any individuals that come in, maybe they're they're kind of dealing with the substance issue and, and maybe they can't go to rehab or they can't go to a 90-day, I don't like to say that word, but a 90-day treatment mm -hmm. facility. Um is, is Do you have some of those individuals, or is this um, a different category of, of groups that we're uh, tackling and helping? Sometimes, and, and it's so interesting the way those two issues are separated because there's so much overlap. Yeah. People don't you know develop substance use issues without some kind of reason for that, some kind of mental health stuff, some trauma, a hard life. Um, and so we do, um, we aren't able to take folks when they are, you know, going through withdrawals or actively using, but we have, we actually had a gentleman a couple weeks ago who was here, who did have a bed ready for him at a 30 day program, but not for a week and a half. And, you know, for those folks who use substances, that's a long time that's a long, to long stay long clean. Time. Yeah. And still be ready to go, you know, when, when you're ready to go, it needs to happen as quickly as possible. And so he was able to come here. And we focused on his mental health and he left from here and went straight there. And so we are also able to be a bridge for that. And I want to say too, our recovery specialists all have some level of personal experience with either mental health or substance use recovery or something like that. And so we do that very intentionally to try to create an environment where we're not super like stuffy white coat kind of situation. <laughs> so we're here and, you know, we've been through it too. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our staff are able to really connect with our clients that way and be a living example of like what the right care at the right time can do. A hundred percent. And just, you know, hearing that to where though you were able to bridge that gap of, you know, Hey, we know that you got to go, uh, you're going to go to a, a, a treatment program, but for the next, you know, week and a half, we got you. I mean, you hit it right on the head that week and a half. If, you know, we couldn't maybe get into the CSU or have that opportunity to have that space, who knows what that week could have looked like? Because yeah. when you're in the middle of it, you know, a, a day could feel like, you know, four months. That yeah. it's just, I, yeah. this is so important, Carson. And, and whenever you have a room full of diverse uh, individuals, as you're doing your groups, 
is it important to have those, you know, different uh, different demographics, if you will, to have a, a more of a constructive conversation? Because kind of like what you were saying, and you guys do such an amazing job of connecting. If you only have, you know, you know, one idea or maybe one demo, you're missing out on so much growth. Absolutely. And I think a lot of our clients see that and some of our staff see that too. Yeah. You know, it's really, really common that we see ourselves and some of the folks that come through, um, you know, because people are just people no matter what they've got going on. And so I think a lot of our clients do do kind of see other perspectives in their peers that are here. Um, sometimes we see folks really, really kind of taking on a mentoring role with another client or something like that. And sometimes people come in thinking that, you know, this is the worst thing that could have possibly happened. Everything is terrible. And then they come in and hear somebody else's story and they're like, man, I'm doing all right. Okay. Like that yeah. perspective can really be helpful. Yeah. Well, and I just, that's why I really love this idea of it because I, you know, I'm one of those, I used to be, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. But when you have those conversations and groups and you really get to see how some of the other experiences that other individuals have powered through, it is uplifting and it keeps you motivated to go, Hey, if they can do that, I can handle what I'm handling too. Is that what you've witnessed yeah. just to in those group sessions yeah it really flips to more of a growth mindset yeah you know we focus so much on problem solving that like yes we absolutely want to hear everybody's got a story you know and it matters what has happened matters and then we kind of shift to moving forward so like in the future how do we avoid that or you know how can we help you get back to where you want to be like what does that look like and really kind of focusing on future oriented like person-centered kind of conversations and how many uh, individuals can you guys take inside the CS, uh, the crisis stabilization unit at one time? We have eight beds, so it does make for a good like group size, but it's not a lot of people. It's We try really hard to not be a really overwhelming environment. We don't feel like a hospital. Everybody has their own room. And like I said earlier, there is some downtime, so we can you know do puzzles or people can bring their own kinds of things that they like to do. Like we've had folks come in and crochet in their downtime and things like that. How important is it too for an individual that's coming in? And and like I said, I'm I'm kind of learning with the audience here on on the reactions and just uh some of the nuances to this. If someone comes in and they're, you know, overwhelmed, they're in that they're in the middle of of a, you know, a manic or an episode or something's happening, a crisis. Is there a, a wind down period for them as they get welcomed in? I know it's only a short stay, so there's only so much time that you can work with, but I didn't know how that welcome kind of uh, went for those patients, for those individuals that maybe are very overwhelmed and maybe just need a, a, a dark room for about, you know, an hour and then let's go do this. <laughs> I know, absolutely. And I think that would be me for sure. <laughs> Same here, 100%. <laughs> um, so I, we do, um, people come in and we do have some admission stuff we need to do. Obviously mm -hmm. there's paperwork and computer stuff, but that can be, you know, kind of flexed throughout the day. We can make sure they get in, have a shower, have a nap, and then get a snack. And then we can do it. Um, you know, that first day is really, really crucial in people's impressions of this place and what to expect. And so we try hard to kind of ease people in. So you don't have to attend, you know, if you get in at 1.30 and groups at 2, we're going to skip it. And we'll, you know, <laughs> don't <out>. rush. So <laughs> we, we definitely have time for that. One thing I was looking into before I had you on the show today, just going on to centerstone.org and looking up the crisis stabilization unit, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that 24-hour wraparound care. You hit on it a little bit earlier, but I think this is so important because um, I was looking, and it says a nurse who can answer questions, provide uh, you a care and support, and all these other services. Can you detail those again? Because I have a few more questions about them. I think this is so, uh, so beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the nitty gritty of it, we do have a nurse. She's here 40 hours a week. So she's on site when she's wow. here. Um, she is excellent and has tons of great experience. Um, we have recovery specialists 24 hours a day. And we do have an on-call nurse and an on-call psychiatrist. So we can always answer those questions. They just may not be in the building. Um, our recovery specialists, like I said, have a really great mix of education and personal experience. They're here 24 hours and they do groups with clients. They can do individuals with clients. We're here to answer the phone for folks that have left. Sometimes they call at all hours just to kind of talk. Um, I'm here. I mostly do admission pieces and things like that. Um, and we set up with outpatient mental health or substance use counseling. 
when people leave here, we make sure that they have a follow-up appointment in place with a counselor, the psychiatrist, things like that. Our nurse really likes to help get people set up with primary care providers, yep. things like that. And so we try to connect to what resources they need. Um, again, obviously in this area, there's kind of a lack of resources and some things. So, you know, with things like housing and transportation, we do what we can. Um, we don't have like secret resources or anything. So we just have <laughs> right. to operate with what's available, but we do what we can. So we really focus on group and individual work though. And we have nursing and psychiatry as well. And, you know, just from your experience, Carson, I'd like to hear more about the folks uh, once they leave. Are there some pretty good success stories with uh, CSU from your experience? Yeah, we do. We do. And we have had several people who who have come through and then continue to see outpatient counselors in this building. That's wonderful. And so we sometimes get to run into them like in the front. Um, and it's really, really satisfying for me. And I hope satisfying for them. I guess I should ask next time to see them and, and kind of check in and hear how things are going. We every once in a while have folks who know that they can come back if they need to. So we've had a few folks who have been back a couple of times and that that's good to see because the more they're here when they get in they're able to tell you kind of you know obviously something happened but like what went wrong like in the planning and like what could we do better this time um but we have had some good success stories i wish i had had one ready for you like no a it's example. all but I, carson I, the reason i asked that not to cut you off is i just i get this picture because just how you've spoke you've really detailed just a brilliant picture of what csu is and I just have this idea, you know, where you have individuals of all ages in, in these groups and they're talking through them and just some of those intergenerational, you know, kind of thoughts coming out mm -hmm. and, and developing maybe critical thinking skills in your younger patients from your older ones and all of them feeding off of each other. It's such a great, you know, almost village atmosphere where you're all lifting to be, to be the tide. And that's why I think this is just such a win, especially because I know so many people that really, you know, could have utilized the CSU maybe a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They were going through immense, uh, you know, uh, crisis and they didn't know what, where to go. And to know yeah. this now, I mean, this is just amazing. And take me through what uh, you get the most joy out of in, in your position. Is it seeing the folks coming in knowing, hey, you're, you're making a big jump? Or is it, you know, the group sessions? Or is it after the times come to say goodbye, seeing that turnaround? What does it for you, Carson? So... Something that we do here, we do a safety plan right when they get in. It's usually me. So I'll ask, you know, kind of what what we should look out for, what works. And we have that conversation. And then we do it again before they leave. And we try to incorporate these new skills and things that we've talked about. And I think that for me really is the most satisfying because you can see just the change in the way that folks speak to you the way that they're talking about, you know, these plans, their level of confidence when they're ready to go home is so, it's just powerful. It really yeah. is. They can, you know, they are, you know, the master of their own destinies here and they have done all this work and it, it shows and they know it. And that's, that's really satisfying for me to see. Does it motivate you at all? Yeah. When you see that too, because if I was in your position, you know, I, because listen, we all have things that we're battling and going through each and every day. But to see that and see those folks coming in and starting over and or, or maybe turn it in, in seven to ten days, turning it around, I get fired up and go, see if they can do it, you can do it too. Does it give you some motivation? Just curious. Yeah, it does. And something unique too that happens is the more that you teach coping skills and setting boundaries and things like this, the better you're able to do it yourself. Yep. You always get a different perspective in teaching than you do when you learn. And so it is, it does help kind of implement some things. It's really, it's really neat. I am not an organized person at all. And I've been able to kind of make some systems for myself that have helped tremendously. That well, and see, and neither am I. That's why I'm so thankful that everything's done by, you know, technology here that I don't have to touch. <laughs> but, um, you know, Carson, my other questions for you, because we're wrapping up on our time here. I always tell everyone 15 minutes, but this was too interesting to not talk about a little bit longer. And I wanted just to know a little bit more about the in, uh, the process. So if someone reaches out, let's say, God forbid, that they're in a crisis currently, or maybe they know that their brother, sister, their loved one, uh, partners going through a crisis, maybe this could be a spot. What's the first step? Is it just giving a phone call and seeing what that, uh, what's open, what's available? 
Yeah, so there are several ways we try to keep as many doors open as possible because not everybody is familiar with mental health and getting that care. Right. So we do have a unit number you can call us directly if it's serious, if you feel like you are in any kind of danger of being a harm to yourself or someone else, go to the ER or call 911. Um, and then Centerstone has like mobile crisis teams that will go out and meet with you there. They can also come to the house. Centerstone has a crisis hotline. Um, or you can, if you're a community partner or provider, you can fill out a referral form. It's on our website and send that over via email fax. Give us a call. Really, any way you can get a hold of us, we'll do the job. <laughs> And how long's the turnaround time for that? You know, to to get a to get a response, maybe get some feedback. Is there a you know a, a couple of day waiting period just for that way? The folks that maybe are gathering this information just in case they need to utilize it, so they know a little bit more of the the process there. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes okay. we do because of staffing. We are only able to admit folks usually during business hours, Monday to Friday. So. Um, if, you know, if we get a referral in that time, if we can swing it right, then we will. Um, and we're working on expanding those hours as we kind of move forward with reopening, but typically the next day, um, it's, and we'll call when we get the referral, we'll call back within an hour or so. So you'll be in communication with us, even if you're not here and we can try to help kind of, you know, safety plan until you're here or help you figure out transportation to get here or whatever the case is. Um, I tell people when I call the first time, you know, call us back every 10 minutes if you need to, like, we'll get you here. We'll just got to figure that out. And then once they're in, there's usually about a 24 hour turnaround time for psychiatry as well. That's something people ask a lot. Wow. Um, if you are admitted Monday, well, yeah, Monday to Thursday, you are able to see our psychiatrist typically the next morning. Um, that's huge. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being, I mean, that's a, that's a very quick turnaround in terms of, of, of that type of help. And Carson, uh, I don't know if you can give me the, uh, the, you know, full answer, you know, but what are your thoughts on going forward with CSU? Do you see this uh, program expanding to maybe different locations throughout your coverage area to offer that this to um, individuals maybe a little bit more closer? Or what are your thoughts just going forward for CSU? Because this is such a great, uh, great program. I can't see this going away. Yeah, I would hope to see it expand for sure. I think that, you know, next steps, we don't have anything in stone, but if we continue to, you know, get referrals and help people and get the kind of feedback we've gotten, I'd like to open more of a unit that's focused on folks who are unhoused specifically, because mm -hmm. that's its own kind of crisis. And we definitely need more of that in this area. Mm -hmm. So something a little bit more flexible that still provides that care, but isn't solely based on mental health, probably. Um, but yes, I could see us expanding. I'm not sure if that will be anytime soon, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. um, you know, hopefully someday for sure. I hope so too. And then one, uh, one last time I, uh, wanted to ask, sorry, we have folks waving outside of the studio. I wanted to uh, ask you, what is the, um, facility located in case anybody needed some information and wanted just to have a mental note of where they or their loved one could possibly go? Yeah, we are in Carterville. Um, if you're familiar at all with Carterville, there's kind of the one stoplight. We're right behind McDonald's, so we're pretty easy to find if you're looking. Really cool. And Carson, thank you so much for your time today. I know that uh, you're busy, but to have your insights and learn more about the Crisis Stabilization Unit, it's really just a great program. And thank you so much for all the work that you do for Centerstone, and we're so glad to have you guys as partners. Thank you so much. Before I do take a quick break, I do have to take care of a little bit of business um, for Centerstone. And that's just to tell folks that the reason we do these is because Centerstone is, uh, is a really great national partner when it comes to mental health and substance use disorder treatment for people of all ages. We started these partnerships to keep us informed. Need to know that information before you need to know it and get a couple of steps ahead. And if you're looking for a fresh start on the road to recovery, a life free from addiction is possible. And it starts at Centerstone. Centerstone is, of course, that national leader in mental health and substance use disorder treatment for people of all ages. With a commitment to delivering care that truly changes people's lives, Centerstone's dedicated clinicians, as Carson knows, I love how you guys do this. You base all the recovery care plans on the latest science. So that means folks at home, the recovery care plan developed for you is based on the latest science. It's not something that might have been passed down uh, a couple of generations. It's tailored to 
you. There's so many unknowns on the road to recovery, but one thing you can know for sure is that Carson and folks at Centerstone will be a constant force for you on your recovery journey. Addiction can happen to anyone, but so can recovery. So start working towards your recovery today by visiting recoverwithus.org. That's recoverwithus.org or by calling 1-877-HOPE-123. Carson, thank you so much for your time. Thanks again. 945, we'll take a quick break. Our daily show rolls around the corner and we wrap up the nine after this. Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. I just got a new air conditioner. Top of the line. I bet mine's better. It's so efficient and quiet. I hardly know it's running. I've got you both trunked. I've got a Linux. So do I. Barrett Heating and Cooling carries Linux products to meet any budget. Don't gamble with your energy dollars. Call Barrett Heating and Cooling and start saving today. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alt Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. DJ Mike Keith. This is where I am today. Let me show you where I started. Life's better when you're under our roof. Expert agents will make you feel totally protected with the right auto and home coverage at the right price. Also, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. American Family Insurance. Since 1993, Sparks Junk Removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients. That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Not sure if you've noticed, but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. At Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. Welcome back to our daily show. Here's CJ.
a lot of people were able to experience that because of what happened on this date in history. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Paradise by the dashboard lights because, well, on this date in 1998, the FDA approved the use of Viagra, an oral medication that treats, of course, you know, <laughs> that happened on this date in history. Also on this date in history, all the way back to the American Revolution, Thomas Jefferson was elected to the Continental Congress. Thomas Jefferson, on this date in 1775, is elected to the Second Continental Congress. Jefferson quickly established himself with the publication of a summary of view of the rights of British America. <clears throat> in 1952, Kikuro Toyota, founder of Toyota Motor Corporation, which in 2008 surpassed General Motors as the world's largest automaker, dies at the age of 57 in Japan on this date <clears throat> in history. On this date in 1865, President Lincoln met with Ulysses S. Grant and William T. Sherman at City Port, Virginia to plot the last stages of the war. Lincoln came to Virginia just as Grant was preparing to attack Confederate General Robert E. Lee. The U.S. government on this date in 1990 began the operation of TV Marti, which broadcast television programs into communist Cuba. The project marked yet another failed attempt to undermine the regime of Cuban leader Fidel Castro. On this date in 1905, fingerprint evidence is used to solve a British murder case. The neighbors of Thomas and Ann Farrow, shopkeepers in South London, discovered their badly bludgeoned bodies in their home. Thomas was already dead and was still breathing, but for one of the first times in history, fingerprint evidence is used to solve a crime. That's just really cool. In 1977, two 747 jumbo jets crashed into each other on the runway at an airport in the Canary Islands, killing 582 passengers and crew members. Wow. In 1964, the strongest earthquake in American history, measuring 8.4 on the Richter scale, slammed southern Alaska and created a deadly tsunami. Some 125 people were killed and thousands were injured. Also on this <clears throat> date in history, on March the 27th, 1958, Soviet First Secretary Nikita Khrushchev replaced Nikolay as the Soviet premier, becoming the first leader since Joseph Stalin to simultaneously hold the USSR's top two offices. On this date, in 1973, the actor Marlon Brando declined the Academy Award for Best Actor for his career-reviving performance in The Godfather. The Native American actress Shashin Littlefeather attended the ceremony in Brando's place, and a lot of us have watched that um, little moment of television history. That happened on this date in 1973. In 1979, Patty E. Boyd and Eric Clapton—Patty Patty Boyd and Eric Clapton are married. That happened on this date in history. And then a couple of final ones for you. On this date in 1939, the University of Oregon defeats the Ohio State University 46-33 to to win the first ever NCAA men's basketball tournament, and that leads to the birth of March Madness. That happened on this date in 1939. Let's take a look at on this date in music. Man, this hour's flying by. Hey, in 2015, Willie Nelson announced that he and his family were hard at work on a brand new marijuana called Willie's Reserve. Stores of the same name were being planned and were to include his signature brand and other strains that would be grown to meet quality standards. I there's actually I have one of the the one of the best stories I've ever heard was a Willie Nelson story. Can't share it because it's not my story to share, but just love Willie Nelson. Have you ever heard um, Willie Nelson and the Sun do Just Breathe? The uh, uh, It's a cover, obviously, but, man, it is really good. Just really, really good, like Willie Nelson. He's been getting grumpy, though, lately. 
You know, I don't know if you noticed that, like he threw his hat into the stand and all that, had a huffy fit. But I guess if you're, you know, 95 and kind of always crossfaded, you're going to be grumpy. In 2004, <laughs> that was kind of funny. In 2004, Prince kicked off his musicology tour in Reno. Average ticket costs in 2004, $61, which includes a copy of the album. So you got that to boot. Well, you don't really need an album anymore. These are counted as sales, according to Billboard. So the album rises to number three. His previous three albums failed to chart. The tour took in $87.4 million from 77 shows across 52 cities in the United States and sold more than 1.4 million tickets, making it the highest grossing of 2004. Also, on this date in history, U2 performed from the roof of a store in downtown L.A. to make the video for Where the Streets Have No Name, attracting thousands of spectators and bringing traffic to a standstill. The police eventually had to stop the shoot. In 1984, Brian Adams went into Little Mountain Sound in Vancouver, Canada to record Run to You, his fourth studio album. Reckless. It was the first single released from the album and gave Adams his first UK hit, peaking at number 11. The music video shot in London and Los Angeles was nominated for the 1985 MTV Movie or Music Awards in five different categories. <clears throat> Paul McCartney and the Wings were forced to postpone fourth coming U.S. tour for three weeks because guitarist Jimmy McClouch fell in his hotel bathroom, well, and broke a finger. Must have been on his picking hand. In, <laughs> in 1972, Elvis recorded what would be his last major hit, Burning Love, which became a number two on the U.S. chart, written by Dennis Lindy and originally recorded by country soul artist Arthur Alexander, who included it on his 1972 self-titled album. It was soon covered and brought to fame by Elvis, becoming his biggest single in the United States since 1969 with Suspicious Minds. In 1971, Bruce Springsteen and Friendly Enemies opened for the Allman Brothers Band at the Sunshine Inn in Asbury Park in New Jersey. Ticket costs were $4. Springsteen had just disbanded his group Steel Mill and within a few weeks would form Dr. Zoom and the Sonic Boom with Steve Van Zandt, who, of course, is one of my favorite actors of all time. I love Silvio. All right, also, in 1966, during a U.K. tour, Roy Orbison fell off a motorbike while scrambling at Hawkstorn Park in Birmingham and fractured his foot. He played the remaining dates and sat on a stool and walked on crutches. That's how you get it done. In 1965, the Supremes scored their fourth U.S. number one single with Stop in the Name of Love. The song was included on the Supremes' sixth album and more hits by the Supremes and was nominated for the 1966 Grammy Awards for Best Contemporary Rock and Roll Group Vocal Performance, losing to... Flowers on the Wall by the Statler Brothers. The song was also honored by inclusion in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's permanent collection of the 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. Born on this date in music, let's see, Fergie. Born on this date <clears throat> in history, the Black Eyed Peas and one of the worst halftime shows in NFL history, Mar Mariah Carey. Born on this date in 1970. I'm not going to say any more because we have months until we got to deal with her again. In <laughs> 1965, Johnny April, the bassist with American rock band Stained, who had the 2001 U.S. number one album with Break the Cycle, born on this date. And, well, yeah, that's about it. There you go. That's on this date in history. You know, you can always take a stroll down memory lane and get into your own family's history at Hainer Library's genealogy department. We just had Beth on Monday. A wealth of knowledge. And it's not just Beth. There's so many people in genealogy that just do so much amazing work and Hainer in general. Lacey McDonald is such a great treasure for us to have here in the 618 here in downtown Alton because she has done so much to preserve our history you know we've all taken those 
um, you know, English classes or history classes in high school, you know, where you look at ancient civilizations and how they fell. The reason being is we don't know too much about them because of the lack of recorded history up until a certain period in time. And what Lacey McDonald and Genealogy do each and every day is just uncover more of our hidden history that's right here in front of us here in Alton. And whether or not you need them to learn about our city's history, if you live in Alton or if you're in Edwardsville, Granite, one of our amazing neighboring communities, come on in, stop in, and see all the rich history that awaits you in the genealogy department at Hainer Library. It's right on the corner of State Street, right at the bottom of the hill, and it's one of the most beautiful rooms in all of Alton. If you're in St. Charles, if you're in Edwardsville, come over, come over, because there's some incentive too. Once you head on over to Hainer Library, they're giving out free eclipse glasses. So while you're learning about our history, you can get ready to make your own little bit of personal history by remembering the eclipse and enjoying that day whenever, well, some of us will experience some darkness in the uh, pathway of the eclipse if no clouds are in the sky. You only have a couple of more days left to get those eclipse glasses. They ordered 2500 and they're going soon. They're going quick. So stop by any Hainer Library location. And for more information on those branching out genealogy classes where you can learn how to uncover your family's history, HainerLibrary.org. That's HainerLibrary.org. Top of the hour news. That comes your way next. When I got in the car accident at the ER, they gave me a prescription of hydrocodone. And over time, it took more medication to mask the pain. I moved over to drug seeking and found heroin and fentanyl. I went to the Centerstone Rehab Facility and it was the best decision I ever made in my life. I have my own car, I have a job. There's nothing holding me back anymore. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a weekend warrior, gear up with Foul Commit and elevate your hunting experience. From rugged gear for the seasoned hunter to adorable outfits for the little ones, we've got your whole family covered. Literally, because the best moments are made in the great outdoors. And with Foul Commit, you're not just wearing gear, you're wearing the stories of your adventures. Discover the joy of hunting together. Visit foulcommit.com and outfit your family for the next generations of memories. We are Phillips 66 Wood River Refinery. We make the fuels that take us to work and our children to school. We make materials and energy products that allow us to stay connected to each other. We care about the quality and safety of our products because we care about the communities we share. Our employees live our values of safety, honor, and a commitment to act as good neighbors where we live and operate. We are Phillips 66. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. You're listening to Our Daily Show with C.J. Nacello on Riverbender.com. Look around your world, pretty baby. Is it everything you hoped it'd be? The wrong guy, the wrong situation. The right time to roll to me. 1004, welcome back. Wednesday, we only got, well, no, never mind. I lied to you. We got two more. Four more newscasts to get to. But for some of you, your morning's already done. Thursday morning, done for you because you're off Friday because it's Easter week. And let's celebrate that one, huh? 
Hey, uh, let's take a look at top of the hour news. Make sure you sign up for your breaking news alerts on Riverbender.com. Get the app. We're making so many great improvements to the mobile version of Riverbender.com. Some new layouts. Mike's doing an awesome job upstairs to make sure that you are getting everything you need, you want in your day about your communities, whether it's Edwardsville, Alton, Godfrey, Granite, Moro, you name it. We got you covered right here for your daily dose of local riverbender.com hey we'll take you to edwardsville first edwardsville police department announced today that it is partnering with idot the illinois state police and more than 200 local law enforcement agencies to step up enforcement awareness across the state in recognition of distracted driving awareness month throughout april whoo out of breath motorists can expect increased patrols looking for texting and driving as well as Other traffic violations. Distracted driving is one of the leading causes of motor vehicle crashes on our roads today, said Lieutenant Lieutenant Brandon Whitaker. Oh, excuse me. Just during Distracted Driving Awareness Month, my apologies, law enforcement will boost enforcement efforts, stopping anyone we see texting and driving. We do this to save lives. So that's a quote from Lieutenant Brandon Whitaker. Between 2012 and 2021, approximately 32,000 lives were lost in crashes involving distracted drivers. Everyone has the potential for distracted driving crashes, but those between the ages of 16 and 24 are especially at risk. If you need to text, pull over in a safe location, or if you have a passenger, consider appointing a designated texter. Whatever the solution, just don't text and drive. In Illinois, using your phone in anything other than hands-free mode is not only dangerous but also illegal. Pay attention or pay the price. The Illinois Distracted Driving Campaign is funded with federal traffic safety funds administered by the Illinois Department of Transportation. Also in the news out of Glen Carbon, Dalton Brown reporting that Glen Carbon residents will be asked again later this year whether they wish to opt out or remain part of the village's municipal electricity aggregation program, which seeks to save village residents and businesses money on energy costs by securing the lowest possible rate for <clears throat> electricity. In 2022, the village announced they had signed on with Constellation New Energy as their supplier at a fixed rate of 0.1210 cents for a 22-month term, which began in February of 2023. Once that term expires, the new agreement with the new supplier and the new rates will take effect on January 1 of 2025. Even if the new rates are higher than Bowdoin estimated, part of the agreement requires the new cost per kilowatt hour to be less than the default rate currently charged by the default electric provider, resulting in savings for the village's residents and small commercial retail customers. Those who opt out of the program will continue paying the existing energy rate from the village's current electrical supplier, while those who do nothing will remain in the program and pay the new rate from a new supplier. We'll keep you updated as more details do emerge. One final bit of news before we take a quick check at weather and speak with Mark about his presentation coming up in just a few short days. The Village of Glen Carbon's Heritage Museum has partnered with the Edwardsville Arts Center to showcase dozens of quilts in a satellite quilt exhibit during the month of April. On Saturday, April the 8th at 6 p.m., the museum will be hosting a reception to kick off the quilt display. The Heritage Museum is located at 124 School Street in Glen Carbon. The event is free and open to the public. Let's take a quick check at weather. At 10.09, it's 36 degrees, and it feels like 39. It's mostly sunny out there today. Sun and a few clouds, and tonight, clear and cold. Those are your only notes from our weather desk. Temperatures will reach 52 degrees today in the 618. Drop down to 30 overnight as we head into Thursday. On Thursday morning, we can expect 65 degrees by the time noon rolls around and a low of 40 overnight as we head into Friday. On Friday, a high of 72, a low of 54. On Saturday, a 25% chance of precipitation, a high of 71, and a low of 49. On Easter Sunday, a high of 68, a 30% chance of a thunderstorm, and a low of 59 degrees 
yet again. It's 1010 in downtown Alton and for time and temperature throughout the day, 618-465-4545, this time powered by Bounce Back Rehab Recover and return home. And before I take a quick break, you know I got to take care of a little bit of business because we have some amazing supporters, just like Alton Little Theater. Springtime in Alton is not just about those blooming flowers and warmer weather. It's about Alton Little Theater as they truly come to life with a lineup of events that promise fun, learning, and unforgettable experiences for the entire family, from youth acting classes to a Disney tribute concert and classic musicals. They are set in the stage for a season packed with entertainment from a season of learning and growth, which starts on April 28th at their open house where you can register your little ones for their youth acting summer courses or the tribute to Disney music, breakfast with princesses, and so much more that awaits you for the Little Theater's 91st season. They are the oldest, most continuous in the state of Illinois and one of the oldest, most continuous in the country. And we have that gym right here in the 618, altonlittletheater.org. That's altonlittletheater.org, and don't forget to tell them that I sent you their way. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with a great conversation right after this in downtown Alton. Since 1993, Sparks Junk Removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients. That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Macias Insurance Agency, providing quality products with extremely competitive prices. As an independent provider, we source multiple companies to offer the best rates possible, covering auto, home, business and life insurance our goal is to provide quality service that meets and exceeds customer expectations you can rest easy knowing the macias team is working around the clock to ensure that both you and the most important parts of your life are covered our qualified professionals make the insurance process easy so you can live carefree and focus on what matters most visit macias today to find out what our team can do for you not sure if you've noticed but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah 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 at Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go. Has free checking become a thing of the past? Not if Liberty has anything to say about it. With three free personal checking options and even a free business checking account, free is alive and well at Liberty Bank, the local bank that gives you free checking choices and more cashing in your pocket. Bank locally, bank Liberty. For more information, visit www.bankliberty.com. Riverbender Radio has built three great new stations just for you in the Riverbend. The Eagle, the Riverbend's classic rock station. The Bridge, hit music for the Riverbend. And the River, today's country and all your favorites. Check them out today at riverbenderradio.com. Welcome back to our daily show. Here's CJ. Uh, uh, my. Welcome back, 1013 on this Wednesday morning here. It's the 27th day of March. Mark McCurdy, did I get that right, sir? You did, that's oh, correct. I was. I always botch something, Mark, before I start the interview off. Mark McCurdy joins us now on April the 2nd at Post Commons. A great conversation. The joy of beginning with God will be taking place. Mark, how are we doing this morning? Doing really well, and I appreciate you making time for me on your show. Oh, no problem. So fill me in. at 7 p.m. at Post Commons, correct? You will be giving a, pres- a lecture, a presentation, and fill me in on what this is all about. Yeah, it's a, a lecture that's being sponsored by a local Christian science church, First Church of Christ Scientist, Alton Godfrey. And they've asked me to come to the community to give a talk uh, about the power and presence of God's healing and saving love. And so it's entitled The Joy of, of Beginning with, with God, and, and we're going to learn a little bit more about how we can and it should begin with God and what that does to bring help, hope, and healing into our everyday lives. 
And Mark, fill me in on a little bit of uh, more about your background. Have you had many opportunities, I'm sure, to go and speak to uh, numerous folks around the country about this very important topic? Yes, I've, I've authorized by the, the Christian Science Church to give talks like this around the country and around the world. And so I've been doing this actually for about 10 years wow. now, and I've been a lot of places. I actually used to live in the area. Um, my wife was a professor at nearby Principia College, and so we are familiar with Elsa and Alton and Godfrey and kind of the surrounding St. Louis area. And so it's special to come back and have an opportunity to speak in this community. And take me through this speaking engagement. When you start off, what is the audience going to expect in the first couple of minutes of your presentation on the 2nd of April? Yeah, I think right away we're going to get a, a sense of the power and presence of, of God's love, of God's goodness, the availability of, of God's goodness in our everyday experience. I think that's part of what I want people to know. There's such a, a sense of, I think, heaviness when we look at the world sometimes today, all that's going on, the news that we're taking in. And I want people to know to be uplifted by this promise that God is good and that God's love and goodness belongs to each and every one of us. So I think Right, right up front, we'll we'll get into some some ideas that can provide hope for the world that we're living in right now. Well, and on top of that too, Mark, for in, any individual that says, you know, I want to hear this, you know, I'm not uh, a part of the, uh, you know, Christian uh, science branch of, of, of the religion, but I still am religious, I practice my faith. Is this open for multiple denominations to come and be a part of this? Yeah, great question. It is absolutely open to one and, and all. This is not specific to a particular religion. These are ideas that in, in many ways are universal. Um, God's love, God's goodness, God's healing and saving power. These are universal concepts of finding more hope, finding ways to learn more about your relationship to God. These are things that I think people from all walks of life might be interested in and can certainly relate to. Well, and, and Mark, on top of this all, you know, I'd be remiss not to talk about, you know, all the conflicts going on and, you know, that did go on in Israel and the, uh, you know, attacks over there and then what's going on in Russia. Whenever you have, or, or in Ukraine, when you have all these outside um, interferences or distractors or, you know, just, um, you know, quite frankly, just uh, bad situations, do you see an uptick in folks saying, you know, now's the time to really get connected. There's something going on and I need to find you know, my, my spot next to uh, next to my religion. Is that what you get a lot whenever you see some of these upticks in violence and, and just all the static and craziness that's going on in the world? Yeah, I think that's a great insight. There, there certainly is a desire to feel a greater connection to something higher and, and bigger than just our, ourselves. People are turning to religion turning to god turning to some support system i think more than anything people want to feel supported yeah. they want to feel comforted they want to feel like there's hope and so i've certainly in the last i'd say few years really since covid i've seen people turning more and more with open arms to the possibility that that they're going to need some kind of help and answers beyond just that themselves and, and their own kind of human abilities and human resources absolutely and then mark on top of that i did want to make a note for anyone that wants to be a part of this but maybe is a younger family out there and doesn't know who's going to watch the little one i did see that child care will be available during this presentation and how long will this speech uh speaking engagement be going on for mark yeah it's it's about an hour long talk and and so there there will be child care if, if children are too young to attend the, the talk in person but we want to do everything we can to make it as accessible and available to the public as possible and, you know, while you're giving these um, speaking engagements, Mark, and while you're presenting, what are some of your takeaways from your audience? Because in different locations throughout the country, I'm sure that an audience could maybe like something a little bit more than another group and, and vice versa. Take me through that. When you're watching the audience and watching them engage, what are some of the points that you've made that they've really been engaged with? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Audiences are different from place to place, community to community. 
And so I think more than anything, what, what people walk away with feeling hopeful about or feeling a sense of inspiration or appreciation is this idea of a little bit more clarity on how they can understand their relationship to God and a little more clarity on how they can see God's healing power and presence being a force for good in their own lives. I, I think there's there's so much conversation about God and, and what is God. And one of the things that I've come to learn and appreciate is that, of course, God is love, as the Bible tells us, but that God's love is is practical, that God's love isn't a distant thing. It's not something that is destined for a, a future time and a future date, but that God's love is here and now. And so I think what people really respond to is a, is a maybe just a little more understanding, a, a glimmer of hope about the availability of God's love today in, in this time, in this moment, in their lives and, and in our world. And so I hope that that's something that everybody can leave the lecture feeling a little more confident in that. I want to follow up on that point, and, and because this is something that I've talked to with folks of, of different denominations, because, you know, regardless of what uh, branch the or, or what, uh, I, uh, den, you know, what we believe in, what our, our religious belief is, it seems like that folks, uh, they don't let themselves accept that love. You know, if you get what I'm saying, we kind of uh, maybe tense up a little bit. We kind of shutter the doors and and we kind of close our, our hearts off in the most appropriate way to, you know, kind of just keep pushing through the day. And in your experience, when you've seen someone really open their heart up to um, a higher power, to, to uh, you know, uh, to God, what are you what do you notice in their mentality right afterwards? Because it seems like from whenever I've been a part of those situations, just kind of seeing those couple of seconds of I'm doing this, it's pretty it's a vulnerable moment for some people and also a very uplifting one from what I've been able to experience. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, good question. You know, I, I, I think. One of the things that I've seen in, in different folks that they've kind of become more maybe awake to or accepting of, of God's love is that they often find themselves at, at a place of, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's always desperation, but they're, but they're really searching. Something has driven them. Something has, has compelled them. And I think that in the last few years, again, maybe kind of in this COVID and post-COVID period, we've seen a lot of people really driven to find answers and to find help and healing and stability in a way that they can really depend on. And so I think it's it's oftentimes our our, our most kind of extreme situations, the, the time when maybe life feels the darkest, that we're of course looking for light. We're we're looking for safe ground to to stand on it and so i think a lot of people have been reaching that place and when they find that there are answers when they find that there's something reliable and dependable and safe and and comforting um there is a, a an element of i think newfound joy i like to to think a, a lot about uh, the bible talks about this concept of of a new birth or, or being born again. And, and I, I love that that concept. It's like you you begin to identify and discover yourself in, in a new way that's really special and, and profound. And Mark, I'd be remiss not to ask you about your joy of beginning with God. I, I got to ask you about, uh, about that. Were you someone that always uh, practiced your faith? Was this something that you fell into? Take me through your background and your uh, religious pursuit. Yeah. So I, I grew up in a Christian science home. Both my parents were Christian scientists, mm -hmm. which meant that every Sunday I'd go to Sunday school. And one of my favorite things, and still is one of my favorite things, was learning about what was going on in the Bible. I love Bible stories. I love learning about the men and women in the Bible who were facing some pretty difficult stuff sometimes, but found the that no matter what the adversity was, sort of no matter what the odds were, that they could rely on, they could depend on God's healing and saving love to 
deliver them, to, to meet their needs, to keep them safe, to restore their health. And so growing up with that foundation of really loving the, the Bible and then seeing that the Bible is just as alive and practical and relevant today as it was for those men and women centuries ago was, was a really inspiring thing to me. And so as I grew up and came into my own as as an adult, I, I, I wanted to really make this central to my life work and my life mission. And that is talking about and sharing and and living this this active biblical sense of God's love and, and goodness that's available to one and and all. And so it was a special thing to kind of grow up going to Sunday school and, and reading these Bible stories and now to have an opportunity to talk about the Bible and, and, and God's healing and saving power with, with audiences around the world um, is, has been a really full circle and, and special experience. 100 percent. And and Mark, as we keep talking here a little bit more, I wanted to uh, ask, is there going to be a, a, a point where maybe uh, some of the uh, folks in attendance could ask some questions uh, to you? Is there a and a portion or is this just going to be a lecture? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. So what I, I usually do is invite people to come on up and visit with me and in person after the lecture and ask questions that way. OK, uh, I've, I found oftentimes after the lecture that people have really great but sometimes they're very personal or yeah. sensitive questions and so i like to give them the space to be able to visit with me um one-on-one -on -one after the lecture if they'd like to do that i i also know and am confident that members of the alton godfrey christian science church will be on hand and available to ask questions and and i think in in that sense they'll be able to talk about more specific local Christian science activities and things going on in in the church. So there, there'll be lots of people who are ready and, and happy to answer further questions. Absolutely. And Mark, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I, I hope that your trip back to Alton goes as well as it can, and you're ready to come home a little bit and see some of the sights and sounds. Where are you currently located? I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, wow. So you're next to the big stadium, huh? I am just just down the road from the big house, as you call it. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you what I uh I saw a, I've never been, but I went through and did a 3D map walkthrough of uh of the the big uh the big stadium and, and the big field that are what do you call it up there? The big house. The big house. That's right. And man, that's just overwhelming. I mean that <laughs> that is really overwhelming. But all I know is when you're always talking about the message of the Lord that post commons will become the big house on the second of April at seven p.m. What time well, should so. folks? Uh, what time should folks stop by and, and get ready for the presentation? What do you advise? Yeah, I, I think that the the presentation will will start at at seven. But I think you know getting getting to the post commons. 15, 10 minutes early is fine. But you know what? If someone is running a little bit late, it, it really won't matter when they show up. If if they come through the doors, there'll be something there that's wonderful and uplifting and, and healing. So come when you can, and, and we'll, you'll be welcomed with open arms. And Mark, thank you so much for your time. I hope the presentation goes well. And for more information, what's the best way for people to get it? Yeah, I would recommend visiting the Alton Godfrey Christian Science Church's website, and that's csalton.org. Awesome. It's got a great website, yeah, with more information, and they can not only tell you about the lecture, but also about local Christian science activities there in your Alton community. A hundred percent. And Mark McCurdy's will be presenting The Joy of Beginning with God, April the 2nd at 7 p.m. at Post Commons. But before we take a quick break, I do have to get through a little bit of business. Mark, I got a question to ask you. Do you sure. do the landscaping at your own home? Do you have somebody that does it, or, or is that something you do on your own? Yeah, I live in an apartment. My wife and I are in an apartment, so somebody else takes care of the, the landscaping at this point. Really cool. Well, you know, some folks around here don't have to take care, but if you do, you know, Mark, I'm a big old school guy. I love somebody that when you call them on the phone, they're the ones who answers. They're the business operator. They're the owner, and they're there for you, giving us that old school feeling of true blue collar hard work. And Ethan Holmes with Homes Outdoor Service does just that. If you give Ethan a ring at 618-670-9843, that's 618-670-9843, you'll be connected to a local 
individual, local company that lives and loves local for your landscaping needs. Maybe you need some rock put in your driveway. Maybe you need some more detailed projects. Homes Outdoor Service does it all. 618-670-9843. And don't forget to tell them that CJ sent you their way. Mark, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck on the 2nd of April. And I hope we get to talk again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time today, CJ. It's been a pleasure. At 1029, we will take a quick break, and we'll come back with Kristen Burns and company, Wood River Business Alliance, Wood River Main Street, and so much more happening in the city. We'll find out more after this. Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. I just got a new air conditioner. Top of the line. I bet mine's better. It's so efficient and quiet. I hardly know it's running. I've got you both trumped. I've got a Linux. So do I. Barrett Heating and Cooling carries Linux products to meet any budget. Don't gamble with your energy dollars. Call Barrett Heating and Cooling and start saving today. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Timber! With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alt Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. DJ Mike Keith. This is where I am today. Let me show you where I started. Life's better when you're under our roof. Expert agents will make you feel totally protected with the right auto and home coverage at the right price. Also, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. American Family Insurance. Since 1993, Sparks Junk Removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients. That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Not sure if you've noticed, but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. At Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. Welcome back to our daily show. Here's CJ.
go. Oh, 1034. This has been a great Wednesday. You know, first of all, I just got to say before we start the segment off, guys, I thought it was Thursday when I woke up, and I was pretty <laughs> depressed by about 8 o'clock. I'm not going to lie. I thought, oh, my goodness, we got two more days. But then whenever you get brought some great treats, some great Rachel and Co. coffee and, and refreshers and iced coffee, man, life's good. How are we all doing today? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm hanging in there. Oh. Jonas, man, nice to meet you. What a welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> so there's a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. Um, where do we start, Kristen? The floor is yours, Senator. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, Soon to be mayor right now. Man, no, 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 no. Let's not, let's not throw any of that stuff out there. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yikes. No, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So Woods River Business Alliance, this yep. kind of came just in a hurry. We talked about it coming, mm -hmm. but in the last couple of months, it just seems like everything really clicked, stuck together, and here we are going forward. Yeah, you know, we've been really pushing this. So we were um, Wood River Economic Development, uh, and then we really wanted to change our name to reflect what we were really doing mm -hmm. because we're not just there i mean yes we're there to develop and we're there to for economic growth and that kind of stuff but we're really there for the businesses that are already there too there's so many opportunities that we can offer and it's man it's just so it cool. has been a whirlwind but it has been exciting and fun and seeing more and more growth and it's just Outstanding. Well, the atmosphere in the community has been just amazing lately. You know, it seems like everyone is really on the same page with this, or at least close to on the same page with this. And that's what I think. It's just the conversations in the community keep getting more positive and more positive. I mean, there's a whole whirlwind that's taken over in uh, the Wood River Main our Business Alliance. Uh, and that's what I think is so cool is that the outlook you're giving to other communities that, hey, we're getting there, and it's coming quick. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We, um, we want to be the catalyst for growth and you know we are centered right in the middle yep. so we've got edwardsville on one side alton on one side we are literally in the middle so let's you know blow up yeah. and make us freaking awesome <laughs> right. and then everybody else is awesome too and it's just a huge great thing for the riverbend well yeah. and, and jonas i gotta ask you your thoughts on this too i mean you guys are located in such a great spot because you're on that major thoroughfare i mean yeah. you're right there where you can be in a prime spot for so many that are either coming from edwardsville or taking the five minute you know road trip to from alton you know you're literally in prime real estate for a lot of things to happen absolutely yeah. and in the, the passion that Kristen is down there just just giving freely to the to the city is is yeah. amazing. I mean, it just it creates that fire in you, and it's it's not. I'm not one per se to uh, to get involved with uh, situations like this, but we, she really has uh, came together to develop not just an idea and spit this idea across, but develop the the, the excitement. Mm -hmm. So we've I had to jump in, and with me being small business down there as well, it's it's beneficial for everybody. And now I can utilize my uh, expertise in business to help new businesses coming in w with what I can help with. And she's, uh, she's wanting everybody across the board from uh, general people in the community to be a part of this yep. all the way up to, to big corporate business. Well, and you need everyone. Yep. I mean, you Absolutely. truly need everyone to have um, some type of experience, some type of nuance and knowledge to bring to the table and just that voice because, you know, Wood River, just like every other town in, in this Riverbend region, is made up of blue-collar, white-collar workers, community leaders, advocates, so many folks. And by the way, I got to ask you, Jonas, what was this again? So, so that is just it's a it's a, a croissant-style cookie dipped in honey, and it's a, it's a French treat. And this it's delightful. is amazing. Yeah. I mean, okay, I, I kind of, I should not have started this process yeah. because I started with the the Twix iced coffee, which is just to die for. Oh, and yeah. I'm not even a coffee guy. I love it. hundred percent, I'm in. It's great. This is amazing. hundred percent. That's great. And now, um, at Rachel and Co, how uh, are you guys open currently right now? What are the hours so we can stop in from Alton and make sure we're showing some Alton love to Wood River? So Woodward. absolutely. So we're open Monday, Monday through Saturday from six a.m. to one p.m. But a little birdie told me that we're getting a little launch some PM hours so that that is uh, that's in the works <laughs> so we've got a couple of projects where we're going to expand and uh, the expansion is, is going to happen is going to happen fast and it, we're we're going to be relatively priced for the community, not not overpriced coffee. So right. we're going to keep that business model because we're, we're, we're doing well. And we're doing well. You hit on something earlier, Jonas, I think so important. You know, uh, right away, being a small business owner in the area, 
to have everyone on a team, I think, is so important. And, and just in this a short period of time with this, have you already seen a lot of folks really starting to benefit just by having some networking conversations or just conversations in general? So especially with me being a coffee shop, yeah. a local coffee shop, yeah. absolutely. So I like, to, I like to say, well, you know, I make the joke that we're – we're ground zero for development because we're caffeinating, uh, caffeinating it. So I said, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I brought an espresso machine into uh, into Wood River, and we expedited growth uh, by sixty percent right out the gate. I was like, it's got nothing to do with the espresso, wink, wink. But <laughs> <laughs> but we're 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 giving people a place to come uh, yeah. of all of all creeds, all 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 facets of life to come and have conversation. And with with that platform comes change, and and it just gives. Her a place to come until we can uh, kind of centralize a place, and we're doing that. Can I say something? I, you know, I never put my opinion out there because I always get kind of lamb, you know, lambasted by the text line. Yeah. But what I think is really cool about what, the way you guys are doing it, and it's different than any other community. You're making those changes, but not forgetting the tradition of Wood River and the people and the and the folks that already built it up. Yeah, and that's what I think is important to note because so many towns uh, across the you know, small town America are finding those nuances and changing, but they're losing some of their, you know, their hometown, their home roots because of it. And some folks get a little frustrated. But in Wood River, you're remembering those values, those traditions, and uplifting them and promoting them while you're doing this new stuff. And it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, you know, we've we've talked yeah. many times. Yeah. Um, and I've always said, you know, I want this to be a hometown for everybody. And there's so many people that it is their hometown. And they... They want to see it grow. They want to see it flourish, but they also don't want to lose what they had before. Yeah. So it's the perfect mix and just, yeah, it's great. I'm so excited. We have so, <laughs> I like, mean, too. I am just like blown away by the support and just everything that we're doing. You know, we have um, gone to uh, apply to be a Main Street organization, yes. which is huge. Yes, it is. Um, we're hoping to hear very, very soon about that. And, you know, even if we don't get Main Street, we're still going to use the same um, techniques that they use now. Right. Yeah. We right. are already a member of National Main Street. So it gives us the opportunity to have those educational opportunities for entrepreneurs and for people that already have businesses. Like you yeah. need, if someone has had a business for 40 years and doesn't know anything about social media, I mean, we can have educational opportunities for these people to just grow their market mm -hmm. just with social media. Well, and it's so huge, too, because, you know, and, and this comes from somebody who's had a family operate a small business for 50 years and rigged in sewer service longer than yeah. that now. Yeah. You know, when you're a blue collar, you know, service industry and you're going and working, you know, 12, 13 hours a day for 40 years, you know. It's hard to find time to learn, and it who is. do you trust? Right. With this business alliance, you know that when you go, you're getting valued information, and you're being a part of something that's going to help you while you're still actively working and not stopping the train to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's so many different ways to be involved. Uh -huh. um, and I'm a I'm a big volunteer person. Um, <laughs> that's and, very and true. For a very long <laughs> <That's> time. <laughs> um, but like. It's very inexpensive to become a partner with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a business, it costs you $100 to become a partner. Oh, come That's on. It. And then that gives you access to funding options. It gives you access to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <For> or <laughs> just different partnership for networking, for educational opportunities. It gives you all of those things, and mm -hmm. we help promote you. I mean... It's a win-win, really. And it really, it's in, and it's a promotion in a healthy way too. Because whenever all those residents, not only in Wood River but in surrounding communities, they look towards a business alliance or a you know a, a Main Street type of organization that promotes. Because we know in our minds we can trust that. We know right. that those are vetted and verified. We know those are people that live and love local. And to have uh, be a part of the umbrella, that's a huge incentive for any business owner. And Absolutely. Jonas. Let me ask you this. Whenever you decided on, on Wood River, what was the choice? Why why was the decision made for, for Wood River at your current location? Yeah, we looked. Actually, we looked at a lot of different places. And i, I got to be honest. Like, the first place I started looking was, um, was like, the Highland area. Like yeah. Highland, uh, Troy, I do a ton of business out that way. And me and Rachel are true 100% from Wood River. I mean, we, we, we both went to Wood River. We... East Alton Middle to Wood River High School to we played for sports we, we we fell in love there we had kids there we started a family there it's just it's where we're from and it's it's one thing that if I'm going to now that I'm I'm blessed enough to be able to start investing why not my hometown why not where I see people people like Kristen and and, and Chief and everybody that, that's in town trying to put in the work why why not why not that be the place. 
And so we've we've laid our roots in Wood River, so that's where we're going to invest. That's where our kids are growing. We have five of them coming up, and uh, we want them to be business owners there as well. So now it gives us a chance to teach them uh, how to be entrepreneurs and businesswomen and how to grow within the community and how important it is to give back. Yes. So that's just, that's just the model we're doing, and it's who we are, and... It's where we're going to stay. Well, and I hope that this leads to, you know, more and more, uh, I call it a revolution, because if you watch the small, uh, the main streets and, and the business alliances or those type of organizations, what they're creating is this aurora of, hey, that Jeff Bezos and Amazon ain't going to support your park and rec team. They aren't going to sit there and support your car wash fundraiser. They aren't going to answer your email or even know you sent one. Mm -hmm. But Jim's, you know, insurance agency is going to. And that's why I think these are so important because there are so many things that small businesses like Rachel and Co. and so many other small businesses like the Sports Barn yeah. offer that conglomerates offer, but you have it at your disposal by supporting local and still doing it. And that's why I think it's really creating this you know, revolution of getting back to small local businesses that live and love the community. And I really Absolutely. see it happening. And yeah. Business Alliances specifically is now it's going to be our mission to close that gap between yeah. – the, the businesses and the community. Mm -hmm. And it's we're, we'll close that gap in a way of making it painless. And that's the that's the model that we're going to build on, and that's what we're going to do. Education, funding, uh, events. We're, we're going we're gonna to close that full gap, <laughs> uh, and we're going to make it turnkey. So there is no reason for, for not no growth. Yep. We are going to be the growth. Well, it, it, do you have a moment to stick around, do both of you? Do? Absolutely. Well, let me pay one last bill. We're talking to the one of the women of distinction of the year and... <laughs> Jonas Kathy right here on our daily show. We'll talk more about the Wood River Business Alliance and all the great things happening right after this quick one. Get over here in downtown Alton. I set the thermostat so my house would be warm when I got home from work, but the kitchen is still cool. At Barrett Heating and Cooling, we stand behind every Linux system we sell. My dealer said he'd take care of everything. At Barrett Heating and Cooling, we understand everyone wants prompt, professional service. Turns out it wasn't my furnace after all. Just a little something blocking the vent. Pretty smart dog, if you ask me. For service you can count on, call Barrett Heating and Cooling. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. You won't find a better health club than Nautilus Fitness Center. More cardio, more free weights and equipment, more classes, a swimming pool, and more. If you're serious about your health and want to make a change, then stop thinking about it and visit Nautilus Fitness Center on Industrial Drive in Alton. Don't fall for the hype you get from the other health clubs. Nautilus is the Riverbend's premier health club, has been for years and will be for years to come. Get to Nautilus Fitness Center and get started on a healthier new you. DJ Mikey. This is where I am today. Let me show you where I started. you feel totally protected with the right auto and home coverage at the right price. Also, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. American Family Insurance. For the biggest selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs in the Riverbend, visit AltonToyota.com or stop at their location on the Homer Adams Parkway in Alton. Winner of the prestigious President's Award, Munganass Burkhardt Alton Toyota knows how to treat their customers and they will help you find the vehicle that is perfect for you. For years, Munganass Toyota has been a fixture in the river bend, and now Munganass Burkhardt carries the tradition. New name, but the same great service you've come to expect. You're listening to Our Daily Show with CJ Nacello on Riverbender.com. change on this Wednesday morning in the heart of the 618. That's the Riverbend region. That's the heart of, hey, what's up downtown? Wood River edition. Yes. Kristen, fill me in. Um, 
so we've been doing these for about a year um, and this is just a super casual way for businesses and residents to meet, to find out what's going on for other businesses, to meet other business owners so that we can all network together and just show what's happening downtown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have tons of growth happening downtown, which is very exciting. Um, we have new businesses coming in. We have old businesses that are doing amazing things. And we want to make sure that we're highlighting all of that. We want our residents and people that are outside whatever. Exactly. We want them to know how many cool things are happening in our downtown. You know, a lot of people drive right by our downtown <laughs> because 143 is behind us. So we're really trying to make sure that people realize, hey, you need to turn here so that you can go to Cleary's or you can stop yeah. by Rachel's or you can stop by the burger bar or the the fish store. How I mean, is there's the so burger bar doing? I've heard Ooh. some good things about them as well. They are doing... <laughs> Genesis pretty much... Yes, they are. They're doing oh, yeah, yeah, very cool. well. <laughs> yes, they're doing very well. So can folks outside of Wood River that maybe aren't community stakeholders but want to learn more if they have a business in absolutely. Alton and East Alton, they can stop by too? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. literally, it's the businesses come up, they're like, hey, this is what we're doing or this is how we're going. And people find out. I mean, it's super simple, super casual. Um, and that's how I like to keep it. Yeah. I don't want it to be something stuffy that everybody's <laughs> like a robot. I want it to be real. Yeah. Well, especially because you're business owners and you're working a full day as work and then you go to a meeting, you know, having that laid back atmosphere makes it easier to talk about all the good stuff. It absolutely does. And, and it's it's growing. It's not growing just in, in one certain section either. It, it's all the way down. It's from one end of Ferguson all the way down yeah. and then throughout the city. So it's starting to branch out throughout the city. So, I mean, we've got from Rustic Roots all the way down to Bill and Joe's. We've got yeah. growth happening. Yeah. I mean, you've got some amazing businesses in between Downtown Delights. you got us. you got you got Dr. Carr down there. Yeah. I mean, things are just going so fast now. I don't even know how to, I, how to explain it. <laughs> it's literally sense. crazy. I just like, <laughs> I told him the other day, I can't help but smile. Yeah. And there was a little bit of time that it was like, Meh. I was like, I had my yeah. not very nice face on <laughs> all the time because it was just so draining. Yeah. But now we've got momentum. We've got things going. And, you know, we don't have just the businesses. We have new residential development yeah. happening, too. We have new townhouses that are coming in. We have new single-family homes that are coming in. Like, and that the was, Business that Alliance was is doing needed. that. Yes. yes. Yeah. We, are, we are helping be the catalyst for growth everywhere. Right. So, yeah. Well, and you're doing it on your own. I mean, that's the biggest part of it, yeah. too. I yeah. mean, it's, and I'm not taking any shot at anybody, but whenever you can truly say, this is our baby, and that's truly what it is, I mean, yeah, you can go get grant funding and all that, and you're yeah. eventually going to, I yeah, assume. Absolutely. Yeah. But for currently, for right now, to kick it, I mean, you are. <laughs> it's just the coolest thing yeah. to see. This is hard work and elbow grease that's getting this moving forward. And, you know, we have killer support from the yeah. city we yeah. have you know the city manager the mayor we have chief wells that is he's like i can't even say i don't know like, he's I amazing i mean he like, has I can't one either. speed yeah, he's and just it's amazing. fast yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. Um, so, yeah it's it's pretty amazing you know i i was i was even telling one time he's time to put on the badge put on a tie you'd be a billionaire <laughs> <laughs> you know we're like he's he's wonderful he's great yeah. he's great all-around person just he's a good guy and what he does is um, it's it's all real movement. It's all positive movement. Yeah. So, it, it, but the city, the city is another aspect. For the majority of the city, there you couldn't do what we do without their um, their approval and their um, appreciation yeah. and, and their their help. Yeah. And so, everybody is coming together in a full circle, and it's it's great. It's amazing. And it's every, you hit it on the head. It's every aspect of the city. Yeah. It's not just one sector of it. No. It's, it's law enforcement to first responders, to stakeholders, to business yeah. owners, to volunteers and just residents and yeah. the government agencies. Yeah. I mean, it's a total package. Yeah, it really. is. And what time is the What's Up Downtown? What date is it? Just so, so we can get that out. So it's at 6.30 and it's at the Wood River Library from 6.30 to 8 and it's upstairs and just come in and... Uh, it's sometimes a standing room only situation, I bet. so I would probably <laughs> come a little bit early um, because people want to know. People want to know what's happening. And that's so. this Thursday, correct? Yep. 
this Thursday at 6.30 p.m.? 6.30, Man, yep. I'm on fire, and I haven't even slept today, you know, or yesterday. That's good. Yeah, You're welcome. Perfect. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Jonas, you know, whenever you first were hearing about this, whenever you were uh, having those conversations, mm -hmm. what was your initial thought about where this could go? Is it is it exactly what you thought of uh, when you first had this conversation, or is it doing even more than you could have even predicted? Oh, it's it's already surpassed anything I thought in my mind, wow. in, in the speed in which it's, it's picking up steam, and it is moving forward it's uh, definitely going a lot faster than i thought mm -hmm. but it's amazing it's amazing to see i think we can go faster i think we can do bigger and better like i, I don't I'm think really this tired is, right? <laughs> i think we can do more kick so, that sucker in the third gear and, 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 and yeah just like she said though it's it's about you know, also too giving that uh giving that that new age uh, social aspect social media aspect to that 40 year old old veteran that's been in yeah, the city right but that 40 year old veteran imagine the knowledge he has and he can pass off to that young guy coming in that knows yep. nothing about business right so we'll, we're trying to take the fear out of uh, starting the business well and that's what I love too because for you hit it right on the head on that one too because 40 year I mean the the veteran the 40 year 30 year 20 year business owner is going to know how to take care of customers and issues mm -hmm. and hey I just had someone call and they're kind of unhappy about this have you ever had that well yeah i did hey yeah. how do i create a facebook post you know that's the in return yeah. question yeah. it's that networking that ties in generations to where you're all on the same page and there's no gaps there's no you know kind of riffs being created it's yeah. just a team it's that's just it. a gelling team yeah that's it and all positive as well yeah yep all positive so we're we're generating social media networks to keep these guys connected uh, electronically so um, we understand how busy people are, so mm -hmm. we're trying to think of everything that we can to close gaps and and to keep that. keep the method going, you know. Right. But it, Kristen has she again she's she's uh, she's the founder of this thing. She's done a wonderful job, and it's the least I can do as a citizen and a business owner coming in is to do my my part and my due diligence. It takes a lot for me to put an energy drink away from me. By the way, this is just incredible. I can't even drink that. I was like, that's just chemicals <laughs> that's, that's over great. there. You know, this is amazing. <laughs> Kristen, you've been working on this for a while. I have. I remember talking to you last year, and this was something that you had already started planning and talking about. To really be in this point now, where things are moving, and it's my it, and it's moving fast, but it's not at warp speed yet, which I'm sure it will get to eventually, and it's going to yeah. be a day where you're going to go, oh my God, it's been three months, and I thought it was five minutes, you know? Yeah. Well, how do you feel though about this? Because you did it in a, in the right way. It wasn't abrasive. It was bringing everyone together in this positive on the same page uh, experience. You got to feel amazing about this right now. Tired, I'm sure, but amazing. I, yes, tired. Yes, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. It's kind of humbling that yeah. there have been so many yeah. people that have looked to me to help and um, given me the opportunity to do it. It's, yeah, I am, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Um, and yeah, you said women of distinction and that one caught me off guard because I was like, oh man. But yeah, um, you know, I've worked for the city as a consultant yeah. for PR and marketing um, and it's, it's time for me to move to just this. Yeah. So um, my board actually just voted to make me the executive director of uh, Business Alliance. Good call. So <laughs> agreed. So yeah. So in the coming month or so, we'll be transitioning to that, and I'll be transitioning yeah. out of just working for the city and still working for the city, just in a different different way. Um, yeah, it's well. Anyone it's that's incredible. Anyone that's seen you work, Kristen, should be excited as a business owner, knowing that they're going to have you as an advocate and a and a cheerleader and a leader. I mean, all of those components you do really just better than anybody around. <laughs> and I think, I mean, just from Jonas, yeah, I mean, yeah, to hear yeah. that, you got to be excited too, knowing yeah, this is the future. I I am super excited, and and the team that the Business Alliance is building is going to be second to none. Yeah, we we are, it is going to be a it is going to be a diverse bunch of professionals from uh, from bottom to top that is going to be able to handle problems and and find the funding to for us to be able to be self-sufficient yeah. so it's going to be wonderful absolutely i do want to talk about the summer kickoff here in yeah. a second but i am running out of time and i do have to pay uh one last quick about no okay. commercial break but i do want to fill you in on sparks junk removal and hauling you know denise sparks i love a woman owned business and she told me two years ago she said i'm taking on the big guy cj everyone's unhappy my trash hasn't been picked up in three weeks True story. Three weeks. Three weeks. It took Yikes. me four months to get a trash can to my home, and I called every week. 
Denise Sparks heard so many of those calls and said, that's it, I'm starting it, I'm going to get purple and yellow trash cans, and man, those things are mating like bunny rabbits, they're all over, you know, <laughs> I mean, they're just all over, and it's because it goes back to that old school business mentality, when you call Sparks Junk Removal, guess who you get? Sparks Junk Removal. That's right. Yeah. You don't get a reference number, you don't get a, hey, we'll call you back on Monday, you get someone in your community that lives and loves the local, and they'll be there for you. SparksJunkRemoval.net today. All right, let's talk about the kickoff party real quick. The when, uh, do we have a date set? May 18th. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, it's, I thought she was going to say tomorrow. So yeah, I did too. I was kind of nervous. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm feeling a little better about this now. <laughs> so May the 18th, detail so, this. So May 18th. So we do it right after the Police 5K. Uh-huh. Um, that is the week of, that's Police Week. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the 5K right after that. I always help with that because, yep. you know, police stuff. Um, so right. I help uh, do the 5K and then we are just putting on a party. We are changing things up a little bit. Sounds we are good. going to be doing a barbecue kickoff. Oh, oh whoa. yeah. yeah, yeah Cash prizes like barbecue cook. -off. Wait, so there's folks making their own barbecue cook. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love this. Okay, I've seen this is really cool. Yes. Waterloo does something a little bit not similar, but has the same concept. And man, they come out of the woodwork to compete. Yeah. yeah. So we are really excited. Um, mean Street Tattoo stepped up <laughs> and they're gonna be doing the cash prizes. So we are so happy to have them on board with us. Um, we'll have vendors. We'll have the Foamsies truck. We'll have He's cool. kids stuff. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, a bunch of a bunch of events, and Man. it's again centralized in downtown Wood River area, so everybody can come and see like the just the amazing things that are happening and the positivity that's just in the streets and the hustle and bustle. It's yeah. amazing. Well, and to have this, and you're all that's what I love too. It's not the same event repeated every oh. year. It's always new. There's always a nuance to it. And this is exciting. Do we know what time this is going to kick off? Um, so the 5K is at 1, so ours will be directly after. So I'm thinking 2.30-ish. Mm -hmm. um, when you start really hearing the music, you'll know what's going on. <laughs> um, and then when you really start to smell that barbecue, you'll really know it's happening. So, and, you know, when we do events like this, we are not only putting these on for all of the residents right. and anybody and for people to come in and visit but we're also giving these vendors opportunities to be like ooh you're right you know i think i yeah, might want to stay in downtown ooh i think i could do a brick and mortar down here that gives us the opportunity to network with these people that may be doing it out of their house or out of a food truck or something like that, giving them the opportunity to see our growing downtown mm -hmm. and want to grow with us. I'll add on to that, too, because I've talked to a lot of vendors and food trucks and just in, in general vendors, and they've said it. It's so hard to find an event that's, you know, that's big enough to really support the bottom line, number one, but also where it's not overwhelming with vendors because some of those big events, there's 8,000 vendors, yeah, absolutely. so they get passed over. But to yep. be in this to where it's a perfect setup, a nice layout, a big crowd, that could help be the tone for a successful summer or even a successful year for that vendor. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but again, the business, the business alliance, that's yep. another thing we do. So we, we could take a food truck teach him how to niche you know a product or niche a um, a service mm -hmm. and um, be be the shining star within that within that uh, realm of uh, sea of people so 100% that, so it's yeah. it's an, just another facet of something that we we can offer um, businesses and startup businesses so like like with my food I am the event trailer as well the food truck mm -hmm. as well so it's i mean we're we're booked for the year it's crazy so it's wow. It's all about that yeah. marketing. Uh, it's all of our marketing foothold or that niche uh, area in the market that you can utilize, and it's information we have. You know, so we're we're here to help. <laughs> and you know, we had our holiday traditions uh -huh. um, event in that November. That was really cool. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. We had three vendors that reached out to me about mm, three weeks after that, wanting a brick and mortar downtown. So we are so we are literally in the process of working on business plans for mm -hmm. them and getting them uh, figured out with funding and banking and all of that stuff so this that we can awesome. move them right in. This that is, is exactly what we're doing. That is just incredible. Yeah. And, and they're local. Yeah. These are all local people. And they don't have to go to two or three different organizations to get it all put together. They yep. can do it with one. stop one. shop with you us. And that's the Wood River Business Alliance. Once again, what time is What's Up Downtown Wood River Edition? 6.30 at the library downtown. And it's on the second floor, it correct? Is. Perfect. At 11.03, we're a little over time today, but when we have great company, we always like to promote the good things in Wood River. Chris and I know that you'll be back on in the meantime to fill us in on more fun happening in oh, yeah. uh, the summer and everything else that you guys are working on. But on that note, 
I'll see you back here for your guys this Friday. It's still my Thursday because I got to work good Friday. But that's okay, you know. Jonas, you got to work good Friday too? Yeah, I work every day. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Kristen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, we're yeah. working, so we're here too. Hey, enjoy the rest of your day, but most importantly, as always, just, you know, try your best to stay out of jail. Oh, yes, he did. He said he would.